there was a little boy visiting his grandparents on their farm. He was given a slingshot to play with out in the woods. He practiced in the woods, but he could never hit the target. Getting a little discouraged, he headed back for dinner. As he was walking back, he saw Grandma's pet duck. Just out of impulse, he let the slingshot fly, hit the duck square in the head, and killed it. He was shocked and grieved. In a panic, he hid its dead body in the woodpile, only to see his sister watching. Sally had seen it all, but she said nothing. After lunch the next day, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Grandma, Johnny told me he wanted to help in the kitchen. Then she whispered to him, Remember the duck? So Johnny did the dishes. Later that day, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing. And Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally to help make supper. Sally just smiled and said, Well, that's all right, because Johnny told me he wanted to help. She whispered again, Remember the duck? So Sally went fishing, and Johnny stayed to help. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores and Sally's, he finally couldn't stand it any longer. He came to Grandma and confessed that he had killed the duck. Grandma knelt down, gave him a hug, and said, Sweetheart, I know. You see, I was standing at the window, and I saw the whole thing. But because I love you, I forgave you. I was just wondering how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. Whatever you have done in the past, the devil keeps throwing it up in your face. You need to know that God was standing at the window and he saw the whole thing. He wants you to know that he loves you and that you are forgiven. The great thing about God is that when you ask for forgiveness, he not only forgives you, but he forgets. It is only by God's grace and mercy that we are saved. Once there was a great forest fire. All of the animals fled to the edge of the forest in fear, not knowing what to do. They watched as the flames began destroying their home. Finally, a tiny hummingbird flew to a body of water and took a few drops into its beak. It then flew quickly toward the fire, allowing the drops to fall on the roaring flames. Over and over, the tiny bird continued, drop by drop, back and forth, again and again. The other animals watched from the edge of the forest and called to the little bird, What are you doing? The hummingbird replied, I am doing what I can. What we consider to be small and insignificant may actually be huge in God's scheme of things. There once was a young boy with a very bad temper. The boy's father wanted to teach him a lesson, so he gave him a bag of nails and told him, every time you lose your temper, hammer a nail into this wooden fence. On the first day of this lesson, the boy had driven 37 nails into the fence. He was really mad. The second day, he was a bit less angry. Even then, he nailed 24 nails into the fence. Over the course of the next few weeks, 
the little boy began to control his anger. So the number of nails that were hammered into the fence dramatically decreased. The little boy discovered it was easier to hold his temper than to drive those nails into the fence. Then the day finally came when the little boy didn't lose his temper even once, and he became so proud of himself, he couldn't wait to tell his father. Pleased, his father suggested that he now pull out one nail for each day that he could hold his temper. He didn't lose his temper the next day too, so he plucked a nail from the fence. He plucked another one the next day, and another one. Several weeks went by, and the day finally came when the young boy was able to tell his father that all the nails were gone. Very gently, the father took his son by the hand and led him to the fence. You have done very well, my son. He smiled, but look at the holes in the fence. The fence will never be the same. The little boy listened carefully as his father continued to speak. When you say things in anger, they leave permanent scars just like these. And no matter how many times you say you're sorry, the wounds will still be there. Anger leaves its mark on our lives and the lives of others. Learning to control anger is an essential tool to teach our children, along with Bible verses on anger. A well-respected scholar and avowed atheist was speaking at a large outdoor picnic. He spoke for two and a half hours, attempting to prove that the resurrection of Jesus was false. He quoted scholar after scholar and book after book. He concluded that since there is no such thing as the historical resurrection, the religious tradition of the church was groundless emotional nonsense. It was based on a relationship with a risen Jesus who never rose from the dead in any literal sense. He then asked if there were any questions. An old preacher stood up. Sir, I have one question, he said as all eyes turned toward him. He reached into his sack lunch and pulled out an apple. My question is a simple one, he said before taking another bite of the apple. He continued, I haven't read all the books you have. He took a couple more bites of the apple and said, I don't know a thing about Niebuhr and Heidegger. He finished the apple and said, All I want to know is this. This apple I just finished. Was it tart or sweet? The speaker paused for a moment and answered in exemplary scholarly fashion. I cannot possibly answer that question, for I haven't tasted your apple. The white-haired preacher dropped his hands and said calmly, Neither have you tasted my Jesus. Have you tasted Jesus? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. If you have, rejoice in the hope of the resurrection that your faith in him brings. Psalm 34, 8. The man whispered, God, speak to me. And a meadowlark sang, but the man did not hear. So the man yelled, God, speak to me. And the thunder rolled across the sky, but the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you. And a star shined brightly, but the man did not see. And the man shouted, God, show me a miracle, and a life was born. But the man did not notice. So the man cried out in despair, Touch me, God, and let me know you are here. 
Whereupon, God reached down and touched the man. But the man brushed the butterfly away and walked on. A little boy wanted to meet God, and he decided to go in search of Him. He knew it was going to be a long trip to where God lived, so he packed his bag with a sandwich and a bottle of orange juice. He started his journey. He walked for some time. He met an old man. He was sitting in the park, just staring at some pigeons. The boy sat down next to him and opened his bag. He was about to take a drink from the bottle when he noticed that the old man looked hungry. So he offered him the juice. He gratefully accepted it and smiled at him. His smile was so pleasant that the boy wanted to see it again. So he offered him his sandwich. Again, he smiled at him. The boy was delighted. They sat there all afternoon, eating and smiling, but they never said a word. As it grew dark, the boy got up to leave. But before he took a few steps, he turned around, ran back to the old man, and gave him a hug. He gave him his biggest smile ever. When the boy reached his house later, his mother was surprised by the look of joy on his face. She asked him, what did you do today that made you so happy? He replied, I had lunch with God. You know what? He's got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Meanwhile, the old man, also radiant with joy, returned to his home. His wife was stunned by the look of peace on his face, and she asked, What did you do today that made you so happy? He replied, I ate sandwiches in the park with God. You know, he's much younger than I expected. Too often we underestimate the power of a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring.